Hello YouTube, I'm Jerry Romine and today I'd like to give a shout out to Jeremy over at Financial Education. Most of you probably know who Jeremy is and he just did a video on the 25 stocks to buy in the 2021 stock market crash and I thought it would be fun to run them through the beast mode, rank them and give everyone a beast mode scorecard on those 25 stocks. Now I want to be crystal clear that I'm not knocking Jeremy or his stock picks in any way. We both have different approaches to investing. Jeremy hits home runs, I hit home runs and sometimes we agree on a stock and sometimes we don't. And for those of you that don't know, I have never met or talked to Jeremy. So Jeremy, if you're watching, hello, it's nice to meet you. I'll put a link to your video in the description below. Also, today's video is not a deep dive, so I'm going to rip through these stocks as fast as I can and just comment on things I like or don't like about the stocks. And I think the really cool thing is that my Beast Mode scorecards will provide everybody helpful data if you're interested in these 25 stocks. So grab a huge cup of coffee and hang on because this is not your normal stock channel. Before we get to Jeremy's stocks, let me update everyone on my shared stock portfolio. Last week we were up $2,013 and finished at just over $91,000 which is a huge win since the S&P 500 was down 1% and we're already up 39% on this portfolio which is only 3 months old. Alright, let's jump into Jeremy's top 25 stocks and the order I'm presenting them in today is on their return over the last 3 months. Starting with number 25 is Masco, which is down 6.9% over the last three months, and they specialize in branded home improvement and building products. They have a nice low PE ratio, respectable revenue growth of 16.5%, and their net income margin is 21%. Number 24 is Toll Brothers, which is literally the same price as it was three months ago. These guys are a major home builder and they specialize in mid and upper priced homes. When I look at the Beast Mode scorecard, there is nothing here that excites me. Number 23 is Tattooed Chef, which is a newer IPO and they've not been around for three months yet, but they are up 7% in the last 30 days and they focus on plant-based foods. As a newer company, there's not much data to go on, but when I look at the full Beast Mode spreadsheet, two things I like are that they have a revenue growth forecast of 74% for the next year and the EBITDA growth forecast is 88%. For a new IPO to come out of the gate with a positive PE ratio of 275 and have these kinds of numbers is impressive. Keep them on your watch list. And number 20 22 is Amazon, which is literally the same price as it was three months ago. What can I say about Amazon that you don't already know? They've got solid numbers and I love their revenue growth, which was 31% last year and it's forecasted to be higher next year. Number 21 is Facebook with a 2.6 return over the last three months. Fundamentally, Facebook is a beast and their scorecard shows it. Number 20 is Beyond Meat with a 2.8% return over the last three months and they are probably the biggest known name for plant-based meat substitutes. Since I grew up on a small farm, I'm really not into veggie burgers, but I recognize a lot of people are and this company has a massive upside potential. They had a nice revenue growth of 75% this year, but their forecasted growth is only 38% next year, which is a red flag for me. Number 19 is Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway with a 3.9% return over the last three months. I have nothing for respect for Warren Buffett, but this year Berkshire Hathaway has been a major letdown and I expected much more from the company and their scorecard really tells an accurate story. Earlier this year I sold all of my Berkshire Hathaway and it was the right decision. Number 18 is Johnson & Johnson with a 4.2% return over the last three months. J&J &J has been around forever and the best thing about them is their net income margin is 21%. But with no revenue growth, they are stagnant and they have really underperformed compared to the S&P 500. So it is a definite pass for me. Number 17 is Real Real with a 4.3% return over the last three months and they are a members only consignment marketplace for luxury designer items, jewelry watches, fine art and home goods. With a negative 47% net income margin and their forecasted revenue growth is scheduled to decline next year, this is not the type of company I like. Number 16 is Switch with a 5.5% return over the last three months and they are an advanced data center. But when I look at the numbers, Switch just isn't that attractive. Number 15 is Dropbox with a 13.3% return over the last three months. Jeremy sees this as an easy money stock and I'm a little more reserved because I'd like to see a higher growth revenue and net income margin. That said, when we dig into the beast mode analysis, a few things really stand out in a good way. They have a good rule of 40, their LNR indicator is very strong, and the EBITDA growth forecast is off the hook. Overall, I like Dropbox, but maybe not as much as Jeremy. And here's some information on my Patreon if you are interested. 
If you want a copy of my Beast Mode spreadsheet, it's available on my Patreon page and there's a special bonus section with valuable information just for Patreons. The cost is only $20 per month and it's packed with value to help make you a better investor. Number 14 is Shopify with a 15.7% return over the last three months and they have the potential to become a top tech company in the next three to five years if things go their way. Shopify is a company I love because they have a strong revenue growth, rule of 40, LNR indicator, compounded annual growth rate, and the EBITDA growth forecast is strong as well. This is the type of company I love to invest in long term. Number 13 is Ulta Beauty with a 15.9% return over the last three months and they are the largest beauty retailer in the United States. But their profit margins are small and their revenue growth is decreasing so this one isn't a winner for me. Number 12 is PayPal with a 16.3% return over the last three months. PayPal is solid with consistent revenue growth, nice profit margins and a great levered free cash flow. This is another great solid company. Number 11 is Callaway Golf with a 17.9% return over the last three months. Even though Callaway Golf has been up 18% in the last three months, their fundamentals currently suck and it's easy to understand that COVID killed their business. As a fundamental stock, they are a pass for me, but as a technical stock, they are worth watching when the recovery starts. All right, we're finally at number 10 and hopefully I'm going through this pretty quick for you guys. Number 10 is JP Morgan with a 19.4% return over the last three months. And now we're starting to get into better stock performance that I like to see. Now I personally like Chase Bank, I use Chase Bank, and I own JPM stock, but I think bank stocks like Signature Bank are a much better option. Number nine is Walgreens with a 21.1% return over the last three months. Their stock is trending up nicely, but their fundamentals make me want a prescription for depression. In a pandemic, they should be thriving, but their net income margin is only 0.3%. Number eight is Howard Hughes Corporation with a 31.3% return over the last three months. And they own, manage, and develop commercial, residential, mixed-use property from Wall Street all the way to Waikiki. HHC is picking up steam and I would trade it based on the technicals and charts, but not based on the fundamentals. Number seven is Cirrus Logic with a 34.3% over the last three months and they are a semiconductor company that develops circuits for audio and energy markets. Cirrus is a solid company with respectable financials and according to their last quarterly report, Apple and iPhone accounts for 82% of their total revenue and iPhone 12 sales have been crushing it. So I expect Cirrus Logic will be a very strong play in 2021 because their revenues are gonna go up as the iPhone 12s keep selling more and more. And number six is Wynn Resorts. They're up 35.2% in the last three months. Their scorecard is hard to look at, but the good news is Wynn will be a good recovery play. And while late to the party, they just got into the internet and sports wagering in New Jersey, which will give them another revenue stream. Number five is Boeing with a 43.7 return over the last three months. I think we can all agree it's been a bad year for Boeing. And while things are looking up for them, from a fundamental standpoint, we cannot ignore that their numbers suck and that their tattle ratio shows they have more liabilities than assets. That said, they are up 43.7%. They've had some good news and we can play them based on the technicals. And for those that are new to my channel, when I say trade based on the technicals, that just means we invest based on what we see in the chart, which is called technical analysis. Number four is Under Armour with a 52.5% return over the last three months and this stock is the same as Boeing. The price is going up but the financials suck. Use the technicals to get in, get out, and take your profits on pullbacks. Number three is Tesla with a 63.7% return over the last three months. Jeremy said he could see Tesla falling to a price of three to $400, which is a huge drop. And the only way I see that happening is if there is a major stock market crash. But if that did happen, I agree it would be a huge buying opportunity. Tesla is one of those weird stocks that doesn't follow any of the normal rules and I'm making good money with it. If you're in Tesla, just be careful because it can be a volatile ride. Number two is Planet 13 with a 77% return over the last three months and they focus on MJ product. They're having a great year and I think 2021 could be huge for them and for the cannabis stocks in general, but I really believe there are better stocks available in the sector. Number one is Very Good Food Company with a 424.5% return over the last three months and they are an emerging plant-based food technology company that designs and develops a variety of plant-based meat and other food alternatives and you can think of them as a Beyond Meat competitor. This is a higher risk growth company and if you are looking for technical day or swing trading, this is a great stock for that because with a low price and a lot of volatility, things can happen fast. Our question of the day is, whose investing approach is better, Jeremy's or mine? My answer is that you need to find an approach that works for you and fits your goals, risk tolerance, and personality. Let me explain it with a sports example. In the NFL, the most important player on the team is the quarterback, and as a coach, you can choose Tom Brady, who many consider to be the GOAT, or Patrick Mahomes, who may be the best quarterback playing in the NFL right now. 
As a coach, your approach and the offense you run will be very different for each quarterback, but both quarterbacks can take you to the Super Bowl. The same goes for stock market investing, and there are many approaches that can make you rich. In doing today's video, one of the things I learned about Jeremy is that he's much more of a value investor than I realized because he has a lot of stocks with lower PE ratios. I really encourage you to check out both Jeremy and myself and learn all you can so ultimately you become a better investor. And if you were wondering which quarterback I would select, it would be the best quarterback of all time, Dan Marino and there's not even a second choice. All right, I really hope that you enjoyed the Beast Mode scorecards on these 25 stocks because this was a beast of a video to put together. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to show me some YouTube love with a like and subscribe because it really helps the YouTube algorithm and encourages me to keep making these videos for you. And if you would like to see me do a Beast Mode ranking on any other stock channels, let me know. Some of the active stock channels that come to mind are Charlie Chang, Chris Sane, Stock Mo, Meet Kevin, Ricky Gutierrez, Larry Jones, Dave Lee, George Perez, Vincent Chan. Uh, let's see, maybe, who am I forgetting here? Maybe Daniel Pronk is good, Joseph Hogue, Nate O'Brien, and The Zip Trader. All right, let me know your favorite stock channels in the comments down below, and maybe we can do another comparison video just like this. Thanks again for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you on the next video.